give an infallible mark. Seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not see, understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God, those by the way, every way side, and the crown of the year, the of the the crown of the crown The seed is the word of God Those by the wayside are The ones who are who heal Then the devil comes and takes away The word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and the sin be saved, but the ones who on the rock there are those who when they hear the, the hear, receive the word with joy and these have no word. Why he believe for a short time, for a while, and then time of temptation fall away, and the ones that fell among the souls are of those and the ones that fell among the souls are those who when they have heard Go out and are choked with care, with cares, riches and pleasures of life, and the blank soul. And brings no fruit to maturity, but the ones that, that fell on the good ground, of the world, so having heard the world, but with an open and good heart, keep it and keep it and be in fruit with patience. the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory be to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now unto the ages of all ages, Amen. As we've heard, today is one of the very, very loved and popular parables that Jesus Christ uh, told his disciples and actually to everyone around him. The church, as we all know, has arranged for this parable to be read actually as we get closer to the uh, uh, fast of the nativity and as we the church prepare us to receive uh, Jesus Christ himself, the word of God incarnate. Uh, the church has arranged for this specific parable to be read actually last night in the Vesper prayer, today in the gospel prayer, and also next week. So three times we get to hear this parable, which is the parable of the sower, sowing 
the word of God. Um, and the link is direct and obvious that the church want to lift up our eyes to receive and prepare our souls, which is our hearts, to receive the word of God, Jesus Christ himself incarnate. Uh, the one thing that's really uh, we need to, to stop at is the key to understand this, this passage of the gospel. If you've noticed, there, there, there are a few words that repeated so many times, but one of them actually repeated the most. Uh, if we go through the parables as, as, as it was read today from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 8 from verse 4 to verse 16. So only about 11 or, or 12 verses, but there is one word that was repeated seven times. Do you know what that word is? It's hearing, hear. He who has ears to hear, let them hear. So the parable really focus on hearing. The way we receive the word of God is by hearing. How do we hear and how we receive the word of God and act upon what we hear. There is actually another spot in, in, the, in the Holy Bible, the New Testament, where this specific word was mentioned so many times. He who has ears to hear, let them, let them hear. Do you remember where that sentence or that phrase was repeated so many times? In which book? Revelation, exactly right. So, and, 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 and interesting, uh, inter if, if, we, if we go to Revelation and check the first two chapters of Revelation, chapter 2 and chapter 3, where this specific word, where, where the attention is given to us to hear the word of God, we'll see a lot of similarity. Actually, we could simply uh, get the different type of soils that the parable talks about today, from Revelation. Uh, Revelation, there was a message to every uh, angel of a church. Uh, I know your, your actions, I know your deeds, but here is one, two, three, and if you do them, you will conquer. You will conquer. So uh, uh, with the grace of God, we want to go quickly today through uh, actually Revelations. The parable of the sower is going to take us to Revelation. Because all the fathers, they agreed that although the parable of the sower talk about different type of soils, but we cannot actually say that us are maybe 100% good soil or 100% rocky soil or 100% uh, uh, path. Uh, if, if we really look into our hearts, we'll find that we are a mixture. Sometimes we have good soil in us. We have parts of our hearts that are good receivers. And sometimes we harden our hearts. We, we don't listen or we don't take the word of God seriously. And sometimes we react quickly. We, we are filled with love and compassion toward the word of God. And as we start to deal in the word, the temptation of the word take that joy, the initial joy, and kind of choke it. So we tend to have all kinds of soils. And if we link that with Revelation, this is basically what Revelation is telling us. That even, even if, you, if, if you have this few rocks in the heart, even if you have those few thorns in the heart, here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to do to clean up the heart, to, to fix the heart on a daily basis so it's all become good soil. And the, the, the great blessing of the way that this was presented in Revelation that the angel was always presented with, he who conquers will receive so and so and so. So instead of just putting our heads down into earth and putting our heads down into our weaknesses and our flaws, by, by looking into revelation and by the promises that the angel was given, uh, there is a good chance that we lift up our eyes and see what, are, what, what is it there that awaits us awaits he who conquers, who, he, who will be able to clean up the heart and remove those rocks and do exactly as he was told. So let us go through three simple examples of three different soils. And you tell me which kind of soil the angel was talking about. In Revelation 3, 21, it's written, You say I'm rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need thing, but you do not realize that you are 
pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. And then, after, after exposing the weaknesses, here's the reward. To the one who's victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on the throne, just as was victorious and sat down with my father. For a person who says that I am rich, I don't need anything, I'm good this way, I'm, I'm, uh, don't tell me anything, I'm okay. Which kind of soil do you think this person is? Person who, who whenever you start, he, he, whenever he hears something, he said, no, 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 that's not for me. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I don't need that, that's not for me. Which kind of soil can we relate to this person? The very first one, the very first one, the, the, the person with no even intention to plant. The person, uh, we, we can relate this to the, to the seeds falling on, on the pathway, and the birds will come and pick them up because there is no intention to plant. I am good. I don't need planting. I don't need any, uh, any fruits. I'm good this way. I have enough fruits. I don't need to, you to tell me anything. I am rich. I am rich with what I have. The very first type of soil, the, one, the type that refused to start to, to hear, to start with. Another kind of, of soil we could find in Revelation, um, if we go to Revelation 3.5, you have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up, strengthen, what remains, and it's about to die. For I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. You have a reputation that you're alive, but you are dead. You, you started, you look like you were alive, but right now, if we look deep, you are actually dead. You are choked. And that points us to the soil where there are thrown around, around me, uh, I might have heard the word of God. I might have started a life with God, but uh, the turbulation and the temptation around me has choked me. So I'm, I'm not uh, truly living anymore. So for this person, the angel says, the one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. So, wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die. Pay attention, time is running by. Pay attention, right? If you, are, if, you are, if you feel that you're choked by things around you, pay attention, wake up. And he's giving uh, 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 an advice to start to receive, therefore, what you have received and heard, hold and fast and repent. There is another type of, of soil that we could find in Revelation 2, 7. You have forso forsaken the love that you had first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. You have forsaken the life that you started with. You started very, very strong. You had a very powerful uh, relationship. But it looks like that quick reaction died away. Which type of soil can we relate that to? The, 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 the plant that grew up quickly but didn't have, didn't have enough depth, didn't have enough moisture. So forsaking the initial growth and the initial love and dying to a much, much flatter relationship. The rocky, the rocky soil. So for this kind of soil, the advice is, again, Consider how far you have fallen. Look where you are right now. Remember the, the previous state. Repent and do the things that you died, that you did first. If you remember when our father Abraham did one of, uh, one of his small mistakes, uh, when he went down to Egypt and had to, to tell, had to say that Sarah is his sister, not his wife. 
was one of the very first times that he, that he left the altar that he built and went down to Egypt. And with, when God uh, corrected his path, the first thing that he's done, uh, it's said Kedda, in, in Genesis 12, that he went back to the first place that he first landed in Canaan and revisited the altar that he built there as if, as if he wanted to do a, a reset. I deviated from my path. I need to remember I need to remember my first relationship, my first altar. I need to go back to the path where I had a good relationship with God. So our father Abraham did the same thing as recommended for this kind of, of situation. Finally, in Revelation 3.12, there is a sample of the good soil. There is a sample of the heart who takes the word of God and hide it and keep it and nourish it. Uh, continue to, to, to feed it with, with water and continue to look after it, that it, be, that, that it uh, uh, brings fruits. So for this kind of soil in Revelation 3, 12, in that church, we see the word saying, I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. So the one thing that, that is being praised about the angel of this church, that you have kept my word. A straight relationship between the word of God, the, the parable of the sower. Keeping the word of God in the heart is the key to have this open door uh, in, front, in front of God. And the reward that is promised for this, uh, for this uh, church the one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of God. Keeping the word of God makes you a pillar. Yes, it's, it's like someone who, who, who is really, really enrooted in the word. And he's, he's like a pillar in, in the house of God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem. So today... We probably have all kinds of different soils in our hearts. We have mixed, mixed soils. We might have uh, some rocky soils in the heart. We might have some thrones about some temptations and some weaknesses that are choking the word of God. Uh, we, we do have an open invitation today by looking up to heaven, to the kingdom of God, and, and look, looking at the rewards that God has prepared to those who are victorious. Those who are able to repent and come back to their first love and wake up. All, all the messages that were mentioned in Revelation today. Wake up. Repent. Come back to your first, your first love. Come back to the time that you've heard about me first. Come back to when you first uh, had your, uh, your, your knees in front of me and, 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 and you, you pour yourself in prayer. Come back to the time where you had your first tears coming down your face in front of the altar of God, worshiping him and praying and asking for him. So, and, and, and by doing this, we are, English, we fix whatever, whatever is wrong in, in the soil, bring up all the rocks, remove all the shocks. So by hearing the word of God and hiding it in the heart, the soil is healed. Because the word itself, by hearing the word, this is the way we heal our souls. And the rewards are front of us. I'm going to finish by reading the last reward that the angel gave to the, 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 the example of the good soil. He who is victorious, I will make him a pillar in the temple of God. Never again they will leave it. Never again they will leave it. They will never be out. There will, there will be pillars in the house of God. They will be essential to be part of the house of God. They will be one with God, united. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem. May God give us the blessing of sanctifying our souls, bodies, and spirits, and, and, and hearts through hearing the word of God. The word of God uh, is mightier than a mighty soul.
sword and it's capable of, of cleaning and cleansing our hearts from all defilements, all rocky uh, uh, type of soils or thrones. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.